So one of the things that I did right after the presidential primary with, because of COVID is buy new automation equipment so we could double our capacity. And we were really geared up in, in the March primary to handle about 1.2 million ballots. Now we can handle all 1.7 million if we had to. Wow. So what you're seeing here right now is this test material going through. Um, it's the same thing we would be doing with live ballots, is sorting these ballots and preparing them for opening. When a ballot gets here, what happens? So when your ballot arrives, the first thing it does is go into this piece of equipment. And what this piece of equipment does at a very high speed is it's capturing your signature that you signed on the ballot itself. So it goes through this system to flatten it out, and then it goes into a pocket. So all we're doing is capturing your signature. Because what I need to do is to compare your signature to your original signature that's on file to make sure that this ballot is okay to open. So a human is comparing the signature here? Correct. Ah. Correct. A human being is comparing every single signature. I don't use software, and I think that's a better way to go. What happens if your signature is not legitimate? If your signature does not match, it goes to another tier for additional review. And if that team says it doesn't match, it goes to a final tier for review, and then we'll send a letter to the voter. But if, if your signature is legit and it's approved, then where does this ballot go? Then it comes right back through this piece of equipment again. We sort it down to the precinct level, so each individual precinct throughout Orange County. So if I have to do a recount after the election, I don't have to go back and sort all these again. And then it's also outsourced for good signatures and bad signatures. If it's a good ballot, it's then going to go to one of these stations over here. It comes into this machine here, and this will split the envelope open and allow the operator to take the ballot out without seeing the ballot. So maintain that anonymity. The it ma ballot. Exactly. Maintains the secrecy of the ballot. So for instance, when it comes out, it's still folded. He would never see it, and it's separated from that envelope forever. You can never connect the two back together. So then at another station, we would open this up and prepare it for scanning so it's flat. To count the votes. To count the votes, exactly. And when it hits that team over there, they cannot connect a name with the ballot itself. So this is just your secret ballot that is it. That's correct. So what happens is, after that opening process is done and the ballot is flattened, this is the moment of truth because now it comes in and we scan it and we're capturing all the data where the voter actually voted. And how will it be different then than past elections? It'll be twice as fast. And that's one of the things right in the spring that I realized this, I, we've got to get this under control uh, to be prepared for it. How long did it take you to get all this stuff set up? What did that take us, six months, roughly? So this is a very long, intensive process to get ready for the surge in vote by them. I mean, elections are complex, and the technology and the systems that are used, you cannot stand that up overnight. And you have to be very careful and diligent about what you're doing. So that's why we're, we're taking extra pains to do this. So all of this will happen starting in October. Correct. But none of the actual counting of the vote happens till? 7.30 roughly on election night is when we start. And then I can't post anything until after 8 o'clock on election night. That's in state law. So all the logistics first and the exciting stuff on election day. Yeah. And, you know, this is really important because you don't want to know who the winners and losers are before election day. And so none of my team knows, and we don't know because we haven't tallied the votes yet. So you don't do that till election night. It's a privilege to see it up close. Yeah, and see how the sausage is made. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Right. <laughs> you guys have been working on this 24-7, anticipating what's to come. There are other counties across the country that don't have the resources, don't have the experiences you do. Do you see any red flags in other counties? You're talking to them. Yeah, there's 3,000 counties across the country, so there's obviously a very diverse set of rules and election officials and how they handle this across the country. But that's the way the Constitution by our founding fathers was kind of set up for it to be, to be dispersed like that. Uh, I think we're only as good as our weakest link. And as sophisticated as we are, I do my best to help colleagues around the country with best practices and information and information sharing to make sure that we have a solid system. And NBC News can help you figure out how to vote in the 2020 presidential election. We have a new state-by-state -state guide. It's called Plan Your Vote. And it has all sorts of information on voting rules, deadlines, and restrictions by state. You can check it out at NBCNews.com slash Plan Your Vote.